Right, so in this video I'm going to show you a widget that came out in the latest version of Flutter and that's 1.7 in the time of recording this video and it's the range slider. Range slider is basically a slider that has two knobs and you can drag them in order to select a range of values, numbers, whatever. Let me just show you how to build one, just basic one so we can get something on the screen. Let me just use the center widget. Here we provided a simple range slider which has a minimum value of 1, maximum of 2 and actually we don't need these divisions right yet. But what we need to provide is unchanged and values. So let me just make unchanged empty for now. And also we need to provide values and what is actually the values parameter? Well it's a parameter of type it's a parameter of type range values, so let's just go with that, close this, and say final range values, values. And let's just try to construct it with a basic constructor. And let's see what we have to put in there. We need to put the start value and the end value. So these range values are going to represent the current maximum and minimum value selected, if that makes any sense. So. Let's for starters have 1 and 100 to be just like the same as over here. And actually let me make this not final because every time a range slider changes it provides a new value that was selected. So we have that value over here and then we have our values are going to be equal to value. But since this values property holds the state of the app we need to use the set state method in order to mutate it so let's set use that state and that's it and let's just provide it over here all right now let me save this and go to the application and we just have a basic range slider and we can slide and select basically a range of numbers so let's just print out the value that we get Say print value dot start and let me just format this nicely so we can see exactly what we're getting. Let's just say start and let's say end. Transform this to lowercase and let's see. So now let me open the debug console so we can see the values. Let me clear it out. And now every time we change it, we get the start and the end value. So when we take the right knob and go right with it, the end value increments. When we go down with it, it decrements. And then also we have the bottom value. When we go up, it increments. And yeah, pretty much the same thing. Now what we can define, because we don't want, maybe maybe we don't want user to be able to select every single value in the range. Maybe we just want the user to have like five of, I don't know, divisions and then just go from here, then snap to here. You'll see what I mean. Let's say that there are five divisions. Save this. And now we get this. We cannot select every single value that's there, but we can select pretty much most of them. Actually, not most of them, but like, what, five of them. So now every time it changes, it does not go crazy. So, yeah. And also what we could try doing is add some labels to this thing. And what labels are is when we press on here, up here we should get the current value of the basically this range slider so let's say range labels I think it is labels and they are equal to new range labels and they let's say they have 1 and 100 and now every time we get a new, new value in the onChange method we should change that in set state 2 and say it's equal to range labels and now we should get the value the start value and convert it to a string 
and also we should get the end value and convert it into a string and now let's see what happens let me save this and we don't get anything because we haven't set this to be label over here all right now we're getting this very nice i don't know tooltips or labels or whatever and if you haven't realized by now you can pretty much put anything you want in here like we can just say start and and but this is just very redundant and not very helpful so you most likely want to have the values themselves so yeah now this looks better what we could also do is maybe turn this into an int and then into a string let's say dot to int and to string and what's happening over here let me remove these and now this looks even better so yeah and as i said you can pretty much put anything into here you can concatenate this let's say we want these to be i don't know dollars and then we do it like this and now it's 20 40 60 100 and you get the picture you even may want to implement some kind of logic for these not to get too close that they cannot overlap so yeah and that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you next time